Anyone is hungry? Hungry? Not really, this is not dinner time. Is it dinner time or it's not dinner time? It is dinner time. So are you hungry? You are. So I should keep my lecture short. Isn't it? We are used to eating at home. Oh, someone has trained you here too. <laughs> Stay awake till 11 p.m. All right. Let me tell you a story. This is a story of a saint. So this is about a saint who had accepted as his daily practice to go out and beg for arms. And generally people would give some food. So whatever he would receive, once he had sufficient, then he would no longer go begging alms. That was his routine. Do you know what this practice is called as? This kind of practice? It is called as Madhukari. So he would practice Madhukari. What is it called as? What is Madhukari? Madhukari is where a saintly personality goes begging door to door. 
there would be one house that would always reject him. Always. In that house, the lady of the house was not very favorable towards him or towards any saintly personality. However, the practice of Madhukari is such that you do not get to choose. You cannot choose that, oh, these are very favorable people, so I'll be going and visiting them. And these are unfavorable people, so I do not visit them. That is not what, what Madhukari is. Madhukari is that you travel, you just go down the street and see what you can receive. Sometimes you get Uh, some offerings and at other times you could also receive unkind words. That's part of the deal. So this lady would always use harsh words, criticize him. Still he would visit her house. So people advised him that you should not do that. He heard them out. However, if her house would be on the way, then he would visit her house. So one day, when he visited her house, she was busy in the kitchen. So in India, Generally, people in their homes stay by airport. It's a tradition, isn't it? Should I say it was a tradition? Maybe it's slowly becoming a was. Typically, uh, from the times when this story is coming from, people would be barefoot in their homes. So whenever you have, if you had to enter the kitchen, the psyche is that you should be clean. So there is always a rug at the kitchen entrance, like a mat, a doormat. So a rug would always be there and you wipe your feet on that rug. And typically, the rug is a jute bag. You know jute bags? Sacks, jute sacks, sacks made of jute. So after the sack is empty, you use it as a rug. One of the ways that you can use it, if you don't kind of trade it back, give it back to the trader, so you can use it in the house. Like this. So the kitchen rug, has seen many people uh, or has seen the feet of many people. It has, although it is stationary, it has traveled various places because it has got the dust of people's feet who have come from so many different places. And uh, the kitchen also is to be kept clean. So there's a lot of use of water. So the rug, a lot of times the rug is also damp. So it's damp. It has a lot of dust particles. Plus the rug has seen better days. So it is threadbare. Get the picture? So when he came along, she took up that rug and threw at him. Every day you come begging. Don't understand. Here, this is my offering to you. So he picked up that rug, said, thank you.
He went back to a pond. He cleaned and washed that rug with the waters of the pond. Maybe it's a flowing stream. And it was completely dust free, or at least it felt as if it was clean. Since it was already threadbare, so he carefully took out some of the threads, rolled them up, soaked them in oil, and offered it to the Lord. Lo and behold, as the story goes, in the coming days, the lady's behavior towards saintly personalities changed. Now, sometimes these stories, they are very fascinating because we always find people transforming in the stories. In real life, Maybe we don't have rugs anymore, so the transformation is a little slower. Sometimes the audience takes stories literally. So I'm a little concerned that the next time I visit, they will have a rug properly soiled. The first mistake that you're making is that I'm a saint. And the second mistake that the audience could be making is that they take the story literally. But this is not just a story. This has been narrated as a historical event. Some of the ladies' demeanor changed after that. So this is a matter of perspectives. Yes. We see flowers, they look beautiful. Like lotus flowers. Attractive. Maybe sometimes you may even think the first uh, emotion could be that it's very beautiful. The second emotion could be that maybe I could take this and offer it to the Supreme Lord. Isn't it? Like in the Kajendra Moksha story, first he was engaged in a lot of struggle. The elephant Kajendra was struggling against the crocodile. Finally, he noticed that there are lotus flowers around at one point of time. So he picked up a lotus flower and offered it to the Lord with prayers. Yes. So we may kind of on second thoughts, we may find it as a good offering for the Lord, if not for a house. A devotee who is, I won't say a devotee, but there could be another person who could immediately remember this supreme goddess of fortune. Because a lotus is her home. A lotus is her blessing too. So what is the difference between these three perspectives? The first perspective is that we are affected by ordinary emotions. Oh, this is beautiful. Somehow I, our eyes find it to be beautiful. If you are colorblind, most probably we may not find it beautiful. The first perspective is our emotions. Where do the emotions come from? Typically, it comes from the idea that most of the things in the world is for me to enjoy. Or I can be comfortable with such kind of, or I could be happy with such kind of enjoyment. And the second perspective is that I can offer it to them lordships. So what is the basis of that? 
the basis is of that basis of that is philosophy the basis of that is knowledge practice based on knowledge the third perspective is this is the residence of the supreme goddess of fortune or this is she herself shri padma or we could also think of the supreme lord holding a lotus in his hands so in the third perspective we understand spiritual emotions we understand spiritual personalities the difference between the second emotion and third emotion is the second emotion is more about who i am in relationship to the lord the third emotion the third perspective the emotion is about the lord is all is all, all in all yo maam pashyati sarvatra sarvam cha mai pashyati one who is able to see me in all places and see everything in me such a person is never lost to me nor am i ever lost to him so we have to be either we have to be very much engrossed in spiritual practices like completely engrossed in spiritual practices or we have to be very very aware of all that is happening in our life so the first scene is where one is spontaneously engaged because complete engrossment so that there is some spontaneity you know what is spontaneity like when you see an ice cream and immediately feel i should taste it have it that's spontaneity you do not analyze you are not trying to have second thoughts about it it's only after you have it then you realize it oh i haven't taken my anti diabetic medicine <laughs> first impulse that is called as spontaneity why because you are completely consumed by that the second is awareness you realize that you need to be thoughtful why is that if you are not thoughtful spontaneity is right now not available in terms of you know being spontaneous and seeing the lord in every in everything that is around us that spontaneity may not be there only after you know some severe incident in our life we may think like oh maybe it is my karma that is an after thought so awareness is very important why is that if we are not aware if we don't make good choices there is greater possibility that the choices that we make may not be really helpful for us why is that the greater possibility that is the effect of time time brings an opportunity but opportunity is only for that moment as soon as time brings in an opportunity time also brings in the time frame the clock is ticking so as soon as the opportunity is available to us it has started decaying that is influence of time this material world is very fast moving very fast there are so many ways people's thoughts are clashing with each other and all of those vibrations can affect so many species of life like us driving down the road we hardly understand that the exhaust is affecting the species by the side of the road 
does. So every activity of ours, every thought of ours, and understand the permutation and combination of it. The volume that you are speaking of, it is immense, it is huge. Constant turmoil. Therefore, it is important that we always use every moment that we have to make good choices in life. If we don't, then by the effect of time, the choices that we make would be not very healthy because we have not made those choices. We just let those choices enter into our, into our lives. So this is life. There are good stories that we hear which are inspiring. And then we have to be meditative or we have to be introspective. Stories are like you know, good sign boards to give you the direction. The journey has to be commenced and the journey has to be completed by each one of us. So if there are no signboards, the journey still has to go on. You cannot be like, hey, I did not get any more stories, so I don't feel inspired. Yeah? So this saintly personality. use that opportunity and this is this is the influence of being always very active or this is the way how um, what we speak of as the idea of karma yoga basically being very active in life one cannot be passive because when we are active in life and if we it is very uh, well thought out activity, there will be a circular circle of influence. It's just plain physics. There will be some influence because you create a field of energy, that energy dissipates, that energy expands, not dissipates, but expands. And it is going to interact with some other energetic field, some other person's aura, some other person's consciousness. Therefore, when you are in a very, very uh, favorable environment, this, this body, which we, this, this uh, existence that we call as the body, is being hit by so many charged particles. And those charged particles are hitting and the body kind of becomes comes in sync with that. Then we also start clapping and we also start singing like, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, we start doing that and dancing. Why is that? And similarly, if you go into an environment where people are feeling very fearful and scared, then you also, sorry. Okay. Let me see. I'll turn it on to Why did we miss out on that?
Nothing. Your uh, Gmail, right? Yes, sir. We have a used our normal user group online thing. Just type that now. I'll send you a link. I send you a link on the mail. On your mail. Okay, can you get the link? So we have a, the devotees are logged into our normal group. Sure. That we use every day. Okay. Sorry. So, set up. If you want, you can also send that link. To you? No. Or the Zoom link that I sent you. It's all in. If you don't want to. You'll have to set up another. Perfect. Okay. So where were we? Energy, dancing, kirtan. On the other hand, if we are amongst people where there's a lot of fear, unless until you yourself are coming from Mars, like you, you have a different uh, approach to life at that moment, you will be affected by that energy. It's Plain science. Now, if I have a boil somewhere in my body and it's painful, let's say there's a boil on my hand and it's painful. So every time my boil hits something, I get pain. Correct? What is the pain? It is certain neurotransmitters. <coughs> there, is, there is a network in the body that understands that within the body there is space which is not very healthy for the body. So you feel it as pain. The way the constitution or the way the, the uh, let us say, flux happens within the body, it is going to create emotions. So if we are in an environment that is surcharged with a certain kind of emotion, then the cells in the body also vibrate accordingly. Unless and until, I, as I said, we are completely cut off from that. Unless and until we are like, we have an armor, an emotional armor, like I'm not going to be affected. Saintly personalities can be, you know, somebody who's in complete meditation, they are lost in <coughs> uh, themselves. They may not be affected by it. Like Lord Shiva may not be affected by it because if he's in deep meditation, so he has that armor, a kavach. 
because of his practices or somebody else who may be very uh, who uh, may uh, consciously not want to care so that person also has an armor most of us will be affected by it hence there is a lot of emphasis on we should take physical association we should take physical association in the previous uh, couple of years there was a lot of virtual association but this wasn't reflecting that energy no the only way that could reflect energy was the photons the eyes the if the eyes felt inspired then emotions were there the rest of the senses would were, were not being affected because they were far away they were in a different energetic uh, energy field field of energy so for us we have to realize that we have to make choices wherein our kshetra the field of activity creates favorable vibrations for us but typically uh in the um vedic culture you can also call it as the bharatiya culture and indian culture people would take out time most of you how many of you are from south india south of the vindhyas you know the vindhya there is the vindhya parvat in india that segregates a certain part of india from the rest of india you know that how many people are aware of the vindhya mountains please raise up your hands how many are not aware of the vindhya mountains please raise up okay all right so anything above the state of madhya pradesh northern maharashtra <coughs> is a different territory because there is a huge mountain range in central india it is called as the vindhya mountains that is where the river narmada originates all right heard of the river narmada yeah so the vindhya mountains so south of the india vindhya mountains so all the southern states people who have adopted that culture they take out maybe every year maybe once in 5 years 10 years but many of them there'll be a particular month where they'll have this specific practice where their entire body resonates with that energy it can be the month of shravan it can be the month of margashirsha what is it called in uh, telugu margali a month sorry magha masam magha masam magha is different sir ma margashirsha margashira december november december time is it called magha magha is generally march april they take out that time what do they do hundreds upon thousands they form small groups in the traveling place from one place to another one place to another like every year this is other than the fact that most probably in their little village every tuesday they come together and sing songs some of them may sing you know they may sing uh, songs for lord balaji some of them may sing it for some spiritual guru of that territory some of them may sing songs for ayappa some devata so every week they'll do that however once a year for like 30 40 days you know in the month of shravan every day in the morning walk towards a shivalinga and offer water in uttar bharat in northern india they do that typically in the month of mag i said february march it's most probably january february after paush there is falgon falgon mag yeah most probably in the month of mag it begins with paush begins with january 
after sankrant what is that called as the magh mela people come to the banks to the island in the river ganga ganga dweep and spend 15 days or a month this is different than the kumbh mela the kumbh mela happens every 12 years in ganga dweep this is magh mela it happens every year similarly in coastal andhra you have the pushkar for so many days people would come as in groups so this is vedic culture this is typical india uh, which you only see on social media where only the event is highlighted what is the idea behind it the idea is that your body should, should resonate with a particular kind of energy because that is how your mind will find the body to be favorable enough to focus with a similar energy otherwise the body and mind are at generally they are contradicting each other the mind is telling you you should fast on ekadashi the body is telling you you are hungry and then you say no no my, uh, i follow the spiritual path and i pray to um, either ekadashi devi or to this goddess or to the lord and i will do fasting and the next day you have acidity why is that because the body and mind are not in sync the body is not ready for that the body does not have each and every molecule of the body which is simply atoms atoms are electrons electrons are vibrating the vibration is not in sync with what your mind is thinking no wonder most people who fast typically everyone is like on that day they want to stay away from them except for iskon devotees because on ekadashi they feast but those who fast everyone knows that today just let them be by themselves otherwise there is going to be some form of angry reciprocation is it true if you tell them anything they are like don't you know i am fasting today <coughs> can't you leave me alone for today who am i fast who am i fasting for it's for all of you okay stay away however when you are on this tour let's say magh mela let's say you are uh, uh, margashir margashir shamant shravan mant people may fast but there is not much of much anger expressed by them the reason is they are not alone so the body and the mind they kind of align individually same thing happens during kirtan the same thing happens during a big festival when you do a big festival in iskon 300 400 devotees 1000 devotees 2000 devotees 5000 devotees you are like ah oh, such a wonderful experience so we are getting some experience of what it is when our field of activity and we as the knower of the field of activity are aligned in alignment hence one has to be introspective otherwise there are so many people you know there are so many gatherings that happen and today is um, society we may find that the sim- similar times of the year or similar festivals can be celebrated in various different ways 
Mahashivaratri, you could have a rock band you know, with heavy metal music singing out Om Namo Shivai Bang. Even that can take place. It can happen. And one may find oneself swaying to that also because sound affects water element, it affects the fire element. It's not that it's wrong music. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is there are other ways also this can be expressed. What is the easiest? Is it always possible to have heavy metal being played? Because you need a lot of arrangement for that. What is easiest? Clapping hands and singing. Like the simple people from the villages, they come out you know, barefoot, they're walking from one place to another and they're simply clapping their hands and they're singing. You don't need a lot of paraphernalia for it. So with less efforts, you get similar benefits. Such activities are called as activities in the mode of goodness. Satvik. And where you have to spend a lot of effort to get result. For example, somebody is very lazy and that person has to eat. That person has to put, you know, really spend a lot of energy to push oneself to even cook. And if, even if that person gets cooked food, it takes that person a lot of energy to feed oneself. It's like, ah, can you feed me, please? So where you have to spend a lot of energy and the result is minimum, that is the mode of ignorance. How many a times we may have heard, I have heard mode of ignorance is bad. It is where you are completely in ignorance. Many times we don't even realize that we are using the same word in different forms, phrases. Where you are dull. It's very simple. Where we need to survive. So which is the best way to survive with the least efforts put in? Goodness. All right. So we have to be very, very perceptive. We hear, we read, we see, we take all of this and apply it to our existence and see which is most helpful for me, not just today. Maybe for a day it works. Can this process work, keep me peaceful for a week? Can this process now keep me peaceful for a 10 days? Can it keep me peaceful for 15 days? Can it keep me can it keep me peaceful for six months? Can it keep me peaceful for a year? Can it keep me peaceful for an entire lifetime? It's like any other activity. You start off with one rupee, then you try to see if you can save. You start off with one dollar, then you see if you can save 50 cents from it. Then with that 50 cents, now you have 1.5 dollars to work on. And you see if you can save 60 cents after that. And ultimately, you are hoping that you should have sufficient where the savings itself is sufficient. That's the idea. However, if we have spent, let's say, an entire lifetime or we have spent 10 years or we have spent 5 years or we have, we have spent 1 year where it is only going to be from 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock every afternoon on a Tuesday. Where is the benefit? In fact, after some time, we kind of become very used to that activity. We are like, on every Tuesday, you know, like some people, uh, especially uh, in India, they are like, Tuesday, Saturday, we don't eat anything that is not prescribed. Pakka. Tuesday and Saturday. But this similar attitude could be that morning 4.30 to 6.30, I do my chanting. After that, I'm done. Finished. It's done with. It's like the same. It's, it's the same approach that a person who says on Tuesdays and Saturdays, I don't eat anything that is not prescribed. Other days, I can. Tuesday. 
आई एम अ पक्का डिवोटी ऑफ सच एंड सच सो इट्स गुड इट्स हेल्पफुल एटलीस्ट ट्यूजडे एंड सैटरडेज देर इज सम लिविंग एंटिटीज एट अपी Similarly, at least for two hours a day, we have made our life a little peaceful. The rest twenty-two hours, some or the other, we can sustain with whatever little energy we have. One year from now, two years from now, three years from now, an entire lifetime. There has to be a plan, isn't it? Where do we see? You know, Many times in the corporate world, where do you see after three years? They ask. Maybe we should also ask that in spiritual circles, you know, in spiritual gatherings. Where do you see after three three years? Uh, initiated twice. Where do you see after three years? Maybe uh, you know, uh, I am doing uh, the morning program in my house, and after that, then I don't know. That is all that is needed, right? what is beyond that what more isn't that sufficient isn't that we've heard that simply by doing that we are going back home back to god at our root a saint knows what is the best use of even a soiled rug whereas an ordinary person thinks a soiled rug is the worst offering that can be given to any person who has come to beg see the difference in perspectives therefore life has to be lived making good choices always then you are alive and one can only do that if one is very perceptive is it possible for everyone maybe not but at least we can give it a try and see whether we can do it or not isn't it we have intelligence the supreme lord has given us intelligence we use it Now let's suppose we are convinced now. Okay, now being speakers, you know, when we when we speak, that is what we are. Sometimes people mistake us to be sadhus, but we are just speakers. At least myself. Hopefully one day, you know, with uh, the vibration of the audience, and then this will also vibrate. the mode of a sadhu but the seeker that is what i think um, i would i see myself as as a seeker i want to seek seek understand be corrected refine my understanding because life only gives you opportunity once the next moment it's a different opportunity the third moment it's a different opportunity the fourth moment it's definitely another opportunity let me give you an example what is trains in india trains sorry sorry the children that grew up here i'm very sorry but many of the uh, examples are because here um, it's a very sanitized way of or very sanitized is a good word it's like a very packaged way of life it's all it's, it's like everyone is on that uh, factory belt and everything is customized so growing up uh, here especially in america especially if you are a little affluent i mean the rural parts maybe it's a little different but if you are a little affluent if you grow up in an affluent uh, society affluent family little bit basically it means that uh, your annual salary could be anywhere between 50k to no oh, yeah 50k to 100k is that good enough for covid before covid so that kind of affluent family i am saying it's a very uh, structured kind of already customized kind of outlook of life 
but india it's not like that <laughs> slowly we are trying to catch up to this customized way of living in india you get to see all here if you enter a train it's people will be in their own spaces it's very customized you know what you have to do in india even if you have your own berth you're still not sure what you have to do if you have a reservation you still you're not sure in fact even on planes that can happen you you have your reserved seat and you go there and you see already occupied by you know a person who has f- five six other people can you go to our seat sir <laughs> sir <laughs> there <laughs> and then you say no 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 that's right next to the washroom you know sir only two hours journey or sir only one day journey thank you before you have even accepted they have already said thank you <laughs> yes so it's always full of surprises and when it's full of surprises you have to keep your wits active you have to be very witty you have to like okay now what do i do can i do this apply the same trick with someone else so typically what happens is when such a person is in this situation that person sits on the seat in the next and when another per- who it's not their seat so they come here they say sir this was my seat they told me to sit here now you go and sit there so anyone who's the last gets the <laughs> left out seat <laughs> anyways so on a train in india there are you know various uh, classes right so there is the first class nowadays we don't have the first class but third ac first ac then second tier and then the unreserved class so many a times this is what uh, i personally personally have experienced in the let's say late 90s early 2000s if somehow or the other i have a ac class ticket everyone is giving me stares and this akashwani voice in the sky is going on their head what is a sadhu doing in a luxury cabin because the idea is sadhu should be sitting on a box of nails because for them that is tapasya and they do not feel the nails it is actually luxury for them sitting on a box of nails but in now with uh, social media becoming so <coughs> you know widespread people are they have more understanding of certain uh, let us say prescribed activities they are more understanding of that however <coughs> so one sadhu was sitting in a first ac cabin so first ac this is a cabin with uh, berths in it so sitting there so there is a lower berth and an upper berth so the sadhu puts his luggage on the upper berth there is another seat it's a cabin right so there is at least three other passengers that would be coming in as four boards right so another person you know, a nice healthy looking gentleman ac that is why they only have four boards because people generally are very healthy well to do people you know they can spend money so they come in wife and a little chat first the child is like ah. like mummy are we safe was who's is strange i mean yes in a temple the person doesn't look strange but in a first ac cabin who's is strange person sadhu is simply peaceful <coughs> so he's talking to his wife just see modern times kali yoga I have been sadhus travel in first AC. Did 
Did Kaliyuga give the non-sadhu people birth right? To have an first AC or what? How does that make sense? We have to ask Kali, Sir, <laughs> did you give special rights to people who are not sadhus? <laughs> At least not in their dress, dressing sense. But it's like, sadhus, what are you doing in first AC, sir? You should be in the Himalayas, somewhere in the cave with snakes. Snakes should be your disciples. That is bona fide sadhu. I went to meet a sadhu. There was a snake over his head. Nice sadhu. Anyways. <coughs> so he takes his luggage and he kind of puts some under the berth and then he has more. So you I said, whose luggage is this? And the sadhu says, it's mine. Wow. Today sadhu have luggage too. <laughs> because sadhu simply should have a kamandalu, right? It's it is like their, you know, wizards, whatever you know, from that the sadhu can pull out things always. What do you need? Lollipop? Here, out of my kamandalu. What do you need? You need you need uh, one lakh rupees here from my kamandalu, from my water pot. You have luggage too? Sadhu says, Yeah, that's my luggage. You know, they kind of make faces. So, you know how, how uh, sometimes people in India talk, if they have an opinion, they speak into thin air. Their idea is that everyone who has ears will hear, especially the person whom they are directing their message to. So the message was directed towards the sadhu, but it was spoken into thin air. What? Nowadays sadhu have luggage, nowadays sadhu is driving first AC, they are also wanting to be very comfortable. What is the difference between them and us? There is no difference. Today you cannot trust sadhus anymore. Talking into thin air. So that's a sadhu is very peaceful. And after that, he looked towards the sadhu that, did you get my message or should I repeat it? <laughs> they expect a response. Sadhu says, sir, you have enlightened me today. He says, I know, I know. <laughs> that is what we are here for, to enlighten sadhus. If you would not have informed me, I would be, I would have lived with this misidentity, misunderstanding. It's okay. No problem. There's always, see the Supreme Lord is very merciful, says this gentleman. We always have a chance to transform in life. So all transformation should happen in the lives of sadhus. Everyone else is exempt from that. Definitely there is no difference between you. Now I realize it. So the train comes, pulls up to the next station. He says, sir, you have given me such knowledge. Please let us go down and, you know, just I would like to, be, let's take a stroll. He says, all right, let's do that. So they take a stroll. The man is constantly looking back to see where his coach is. The sadhu is kind of taking a stroll, taking him towards the other end of the train, away from his coach. The engine sounds. The train is about to pull off out of the station. He says, we have to go back. The engines whistle. The train started moving. The sadhu says, no, no, don't worry. Let's take a stroll. He says, but my family is there. My <coughs> luggage is there. The sadhu said, my luggage is also there. Let's take a stroll. My clothes are there. The sadhu said, my clothes are also there. Don't worry. I can share. You know, I have this dhoti. I'll tear it in half. You wear half. I'll wear half. 
no 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 that is not possible but you only told me no there is no difference between sadhu and you sir 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 now i understand there is a difference so he asked what is the difference he says the difference is that if there is a need then we accept if there is no need then there is no problem in giving up we don't feel anxiety in giving up this is a difference of perspective otherwise a sadhu also has luggage a sadhu also travels in the first ac train coach it is not that the sadhu would get off at any station the sadhu would most probably go to the destination that is there on the ticket pick up his luggage and or pick up her luggage and move out of the train that is most uh, in the normal circumstances that could have been done however and this is not an emergency where they say that the plane if it lands uh, in water then just get off the seat and jump out don't carry any of your personal items it's not an emergency landing situation too however if the sadhu feels that hey this luggage can be useful for someone as the sadhu just walks through why because the sadhu's perspective is what is needed for the moment if it is needed we'll work for it we'll get it if it is not needed even if though we have worked for it we have earned it we'll give it up and if one does not have that perspective then one will be attached why because one has this identity crisis the identity crisis that arjuna was having and krishna asks him kutasto akashmala medam where has this anxiety come from you are on the battlefield everything has been thought out prior to being here all the options are considered you are in the war war room this is not where you should be struck by anxiety this is where you have to take decisions you cannot have a person untrained person in the war room can you have an untrained person there you cannot only those who are very very trained are invited into the war room war room that is what it is called isn't it the corporate culture that is what it is called what is what is the synonym for it another name for it command center command center so you have to be trained prior to that that is when you have a you you are there to manage the crisis <coughs> so life especially human form of life krishna is telling arjuna why is that it says anare it is not it is this is not what is expected from a person who's in in, in home so much of training has been put dronacharya um the elders bhishma acharya they put they put so much effort into training all these children up as and as adults they prove that they were well trained and none of the others are having that kind of anxiety arjuna is having at least we don't know of it seems as if everyone has things sorted out utas takashmana medam vishame samupasthitam anarya krishtam aswargyam akirti karma arjuna krishna is like this is time of deployment and you are wondering whether you, your codes is i mean is it okay or not 
अकीर्ति अस्वर्ग कंपनी विल फेल स्टॉक मार्केट विल क्रैश You are going to lose your job, and hundreds of other people who are dependent there on there on the various rungs of the ladder, they are all going to lose their job because this if this deployment doesn't take place, it is going to it is going to have wide ramifications. Krishna is like the CEO. Still, Arjun does not understand because the nature of anxiety is it renders you helpless. It's not that people who are very focused in life they do not have moments of weakness. They do have, however, those moments of weakness do not render them helpless. The training is such. It's like the the commandos, you know, the black cats. Do you think? it would work for any one of us if the black cats have moments of weakness that is how sadhu is also trained self training but there may be moments of weakness however you do not get distracted by it you immediately know which button to hit to seek help to seek some assistance however anxiety is a state is it is a condition where you are rendered helpless all your motor system the system that makes you interact with the external world it collapses krishna is saying aswargam aswargam means there's no success guaranteed here sure sure shot failure stop lamenting arjun stop lamenting for that which is not worth lamenting all right let me tell you another story the two ladies early morning in a very remote place they were kind of quarreling with each other and a sadhu comes along the ladies were out filling water they had their vessels and they had to fill up water and bring it back to their homes so one lady was really very very agitated because the other lady had spent quite some time trying to fill up her vessel she is like what is it how big is your vessel you've been here for quite some time come on move i need to fill up my vessel too she is like no my vessel is not filled filled up as yet so i need the water too so the sadhu comes along he says what's the matter so the other lady says look at her she has been here for quite some time and her vessel is not filled up as yet so the sadhu says all right let me see what is the issue so he has a torch it's early morning and so it's like the dark hours of the morning no electricity on those times so you do things by feel it turns out is torch now sadhu have torches the ladies may not have or let us say the sadhu kind of mystical power with his hands and suddenly there was light so in that illumination <laughs> they sadhu sees and the other lady see that the vessel was it was a pot and the pot was placed upside down so all the water was falling onto the outer or the the bottom of the pot and splashing away and you know just getting drained out drained away because the mouth of the pot was upside down so most of us we come with our pots to practice spiritual life
how many of us are chanting you know that <laughs> some, some kind of chanting maybe not the hari krishna maha mantra maybe some something else five minutes because a typical hindu thing five minutes is more than enough you know god doesn't need more than that <coughs> you do five minutes with proper attention that is all that is needed are baba after doing an entire lifetime then you get to doing five minutes with proper attention <laughs> Yeah, chanting every day we come with a pot, pot of sadhana, and then we fill up a sadhana card, you know, or we try to kind of look back on how did it go. What would be the number of times where a pot was upside down? Why is that? Darkness. we have understood the task we are performing the task however we are not being very self aware hence mistakes happen and when mistakes happen the water is flowing the pot is also there time is also being engaged the results are not what we expect Isn't it? What is it that we are trying to do? What is it that quote unquote sadhus have achieved? In the Gita, Krishna explains it succinctly. He says, "Brahmanya adhaya karmani sangam tektwa karoti ya lipte na sab na chupape na." padm patram ibam the sadhus are becoming a lotus whatever environment a lotus is in it is unaffected sometimes a lotus can be in a very pristine reservoir of water sometimes a lotus can be in a very very muddy place sometimes a lotus can be in a vase The lotus always retains its quality of being unaffected. How is that? The lotus never allows moisture in the form of water to affect it. The lotus leaf. Padma patram. so whatever situation we may be in life if we can be a padma patram a lotus leaf or a lotus petal then life would be very interesting this existence that we call the body would vibrate with an energy where the mind would not have to fight much with it there will be good alignment the intelligence understanding the need of the hour the soul needs to be peaceful happy we gives reduction to the mind and the mind perfectly sees that the horses of the senses are in alignment that is krishna consciousness chanting the holy names of the lord we there is the possibility that we achieve this state we achieve this state of consciousness hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare so let's stop here hare krishna any questions clarifications doubts when we say self awareness what does it mean aap 
Very succinctly, self-awareness means that we are aware of the opportunity that every moment brings to us, as long as this body is alive. Is it all right? That is our opportunity, just, just for us. What do I do with that? Yesterday I was reading an article, ants, they practically never sleep. They take a lot of power naps through the day. <laughs> Their entire life they never sleep. I'm like, wow, I would never want to be an ant. <laughs> There's some study on ants. Did you know that? They never sleep. They constantly work. It seems that they have got two stomachs. One for their own nourishment and other to nourish others. That's amazing. What? There's so much study on them. This, it's, every existence is so unique. So for the ants, every moment is like, work, 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 work. No wonder they can lift, what is it? 60 times or 6,000 times their own weight or something like that? Their muscles must be like really well developed. It works so much. <laughs> How aware they must be of you know, the opportunity. I mean, they're not aware. Obviously, we know that they do not see things in the, with the same perspective as we see. This uh, self awareness. Yeah. Did you all know? Anyone knew that about ants? Please do. And search. Some of that article came up. I think there must be counter articles to it also. However, I get to choose what I like. And I, you know, that's what readership is about. You choose your authors and you choose the articles that you like. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Okay, let's stop here. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Shula Prabhupada ki jai, Gaur Bhakta Vrindi ki jai. So I think there is Kirtan now, right? Or there is Prashad? Prashad? No, is that Prashad or Prashad? Prashad, right? And then, I was trying to see if I can extend the program to 11 o'clock. I, I fail miserably. So I'll stop here. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.